Hi everyone, welcome to Function Pilates. I'm Vanessa Kelly, studio owner and master trainer at Function Pilates located in Tempe, Arizona. I'm here today to walk you through a series of default exercises to put into your hip work category. I'm working on a balanced body piece of equipment and the default series for my beginner workout is one red and one blue, which should equal about one and a half springs if you're working on a different model. I understand as a student this can be overwhelming and challenging as you're piecing together different exercises for your clients. These videos and tutorials are here to help and assist you in the learning process. So if you do like the videos, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I hope to have you with me along the journey. Now, with your client on their back, either assist them with placing one loop at a time into their foot, or talk them through on how to take one foot at a time and place it into the loop. Once they're there, legs are at 90 degrees, arms are down beside them, and then talk them through their TikToks. So we're lowering down from the hips, and then we're bringing those legs straight up as a unit. So think about keeping those ribs together, the abs drawn down towards the floor, the arms stretched out beside you, energized, and the toes reaching away from your body. Watch that your client is not lifting their hips off the mat so that they're staying very connected and rooted into the mat. You'll notice it's a very controlled movement, so remind them that they're going at a good speed so they know what they're doing is successful. Once you've done anywhere from about five to 10 of these, we can go into frog, heels together, toes apart, and then straighten the legs out. So with this, make sure that they are activating their inner thighs. Again, drawing their abs down and in to help stabilize their pelvis. So this default series is about hip work. It's about hip strengthening. This is especially good for those who have had hip replacements or any type of other hip surgeries. And of course, it's gonna be a great stretch for those that sit all day or have a hard time stretching. That's what the straps are about. They're there to assist the client. Then you can go into your circles. You're lowering those legs down and then a nice wide circle around. Now the range of motion with your circle is gonna depend on your client. So things to watch for. Are their hips stable enough to take those legs out wide or are they shifting quite a bit, then we wanna make sure that we remind them just to go maybe to the frame of the reformer or the frame of their body. Maybe the circles aren't very large, but they're more boxy frames. Think more mechanical. Those are the things to pay attention to. And then again, reminding your client to breathe. You can reverse when they're ready and begin to educate them why they're doing hip circles here. We're here to provide lubrication through the hip joints, mobility through those hip sockets. They should feel and experience an inner thigh and hamstring stretch, and of course, it should just feel good. Jaw is softened, shoulders are down. Again, the abs are playing a huge part to help stabilize the pelvis here. Once they've done a good amount of circles there, we can finish the series with openings. So heels together, toes apart, get those legs out nice and wide, and then remind them to pull those inner thighs together as if the heels were coming in to kiss. So lots of strong inner thigh activation. It should be a conscious effort that they are pulling those legs back together. Again, watch that they're maintaining a neutral spine, that they're not overly arching their back. If they do have a tendency to overly arch their back, tell them to aim a little higher. And that finishes up the hip work default series have them take a butterfly stretch, that Buddha stretch, to relax. Follow me in our spinal articulation category next.